Welcome back everybody, it's Mia So Quick, and today I'm going to be sculpting nails, um, acrylic nails, with my opposite hand. I'm right-handed, but today I'm going to be building the nails using my left hand. This is only my second time ever using acrylics, so I know this is going to be difficult, especially without tips, but I'm excited to try it. I did acrylics for the first time on my left hand just last week, as you can see in the video, but let's go ahead and get started with the materials we'll need. First, we're going to need a filer. This is 100 grit because we're going to be doing a lot of filing. After that, I'm going to use a buffing block as well. The buffing block is great for smoothing out the nails so no ridges show through. I'm also going to use this metal nail file to clean underneath my nails, as well as also a cuticle pusher to push back the cuticles. I also use an electric file with several different bits because it makes filing so much easier. I'm using the Mia Secret Monomer as well as their clear acrylic powder. You're going to need 100% acetone. And I'm also using this Model 1's nail dehydrator and primer. FYI, the primer smells really bad. I'm also going to use this makeup brush just to dust away any dust. As well as the nail form since I'm not going to be using tips today. And since I am sculpting nails, there's going to be a lot of dust from a lot of filing, so I'm just going to use this mask. And you're also going to need some lint-free wipes just to get any old polish off your fingernails. I also have a dappen dish to place my monomer, as well as some paper towels to wipe off the acrylic beads. And finally, you're going to need your acrylic brush. I prefer an Oval 8 Kalinske. Now let's get started. First, I'm just going to take this metal nail file just to clean up underneath the nails. Um, my hands are actually really clean, but just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and make sure there's no dirt left underneath the fingernail that will show through since I'm using clear acrylic. Next, I'm going to push back my cuticles. Um, I tend to have a lot of dead skin around my cuticle area that grows really fast, so this is kind of something I have to do on a weekly. I prefer to use a metal cuticle pusher, but you don't necessarily have to. If you happen to be sensitive, go ahead and grab an orange stick or wood stick to go ahead and push back the cuticles. Make sure that you are gentle, and I would even suggest doing this after soaking your hands so that the cuticles can be looser. Next, I'm going to go in with my e-file, and I'm going to grab this little cuticle bit um, to help me get in those corners and just knock off the rest of the dead skin that's hanging on. Make sure that you don't have the e-file up too high. Um, you can really be gentle with this step. I prefer using a safety bit so that way it never is going to hurt my skin. Making sure to get all in the corners and just knocking the dead skin off. But once again, being very, very gentle. I have to admit, these are the longest my nails have ever been. I'm usually part of the short nail group because I can't do anything with long nails. So trying to file and build nails with a long fingernails um, was definitely difficult. Once all the cuticles been removed, I'm going to go ahead and put this sanding bin on my e-file and continue to um, just lightly file down the surface of my nail just to remove the shine and make it easier for the acrylic to adhere. Do your best to try to go in one direction when you're doing this so you don't have any lines um, in your nails or any damage. I usually go in one direction and then I go around the uh, perimeter. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and get some acetone on this wipe, and I'm just going to go ahead and clean my nails just from any oils, even from the soap that you use contains oil. 
So you want to make sure that that's all cleared off. All right, and here I am. Nails are prepped and ready to go. Okay, so my first step is going to be using this nail prep dehydrator. And what this does is just another way of making sure that your nail is completely dried out, perfect surface for the acrylic to bond to. Um, it's gonna remove all the oils. Don't worry if this gets on your skin, you know, try not to, wasting product. But um, just go ahead and apply a generous amount to each nail. Next, we have the primer, which is just going to be a great base um, for the acrylic to be applied to, to make sure that it sticks. And these steps are crucial to make sure that there won't be any lifting later on. I think that is the worst thing with acrylic nails. So I have learned that if you do not have proper nail prep, your nails will lift. After applying the primer, please make sure that your nails dry completely. After this step, if you're into using tips, you can go ahead and do that. However, I find that tips are hard for me. I don't know what it is about my nail size, but they never fit. So I'm using nail form. I prefer nail forms because they can be molded to the exact fit of your nail. Right? Here I've um, got my first bead of acrylic. Um, please make sure that you watch the ratio of monomer to powder so that you're not getting a too runny bead or a too dry bead and that it's just right and constantly use the paper towel to wipe off. And as you're building the nail, um, pay attention to your side walls to make sure that none of the acrylic overflows the side wall nor your cuticle. You never want to put the bead directly on your cuticle, but it's much easier to place it just before the cuticle and push the acrylic back as it starts to get drier. Now that the nail is done, I'm just going to go ahead and gently remove the nail form. It's pretty easy. It's just a pinch and pull. And then now we can see that I have a formed nail. It's gonna need a lot of filing, but there it is. Now I'm just gonna continue these steps on the next fingers. I tend to use nail forms one finger at a time because putting on nail forms on all fingers tends to be a little tricky and then if the nail form moves, it's going to change the whole shape of your nail and it just makes more work in the long run. So if you're new to nail forms, I would suggest doing one nail at a time um, and saving your thumb for last. And using nail forms are quite simple. Um, usually there's a place where you can tear it and you slip your finger through the hole. You match up the sides and then you pinch and then you make sure you check on all sides and down the front to make sure that everything is flush, that there's no gaps. Once you're satisfied with the placement, you can go ahead and start picking up your beads and applying the acrylic to your nail. I like to start right where the end of my natural nail meets the nail form to build in that strength there. And then I gradually add on. Now that this nail is done, once again, showing you guys again, I'm just going to pinch and pull and reveal my new built nail. There it is. Bumpy, going to need a lot of filing. Okay. After I've done all five nails, you can see the general shape of how these nails will look. They are not the prettiest, but that is where the hand file comes in. Okay. It was definitely hard trying to record all the hand filing, but you can see where I've gotten so far from the ones that are filed and the ones that not. I also prefer to use my electric file as well, especially just to get the general shape since I decided pretty late in it that I was going to do a coffin shape. I'm 
I'm gonna say that is probably one thing that tips are easier for. If you're looking for a specific shape, um, you can just buy the tips already in that shape and then build the acrylic on top. Whereas when you're sculpting, you kind of really have to be mindful of trying to make the shape. And if you can't, if you're not as skilled, then yes, you have to create the shape doing a whole lot of filing. Here I am after all nails have been shaped and filed and I'm just dusting it away. And at this point I'm going to go in with my buffing block and I'm going to smooth out the nail since there's still some pretty um, rough ridges in the nails that I don't want to show through when I start applying polish. So take your time with this, constantly check, flip your fingers over, check down the front, over the side, just to see that they are all smooth. Once again, I'm going to dust away just so I can get a better view of the nails. And they're looking pretty good. And here they are, all finished. Not too bad longest nails I've ever had using my opposite hand. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I want to thank you all for watching. Um, I'm going to be doing more nail videos in the future as well as a bunch of other things. So if you're interested, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel to see what design I wind up actually creating on these nails using my opposite hand. Um, as well as go ahead and enjoy this outro music, which I also created. Um, you guys all have a wonderful day and thanks for coming by.